Good morning, babies, and welcome to Simply Stacy, where the joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, today is Friday. You know I like to talk about relationships on Friday, and a lot of problems come from the relationships that we're in. Not just relationships with companions, but even in our friendships and with our relationships with our family. You know, a lot of relationships that we have with people go sour, and a lot of it is because of brokenness you know from the time you're a child the enemy is fighting you and want to put hurt and pain in you so that you can't have that connection and relationship in a healthy way with others and so many of you are crying out and desiring that and want relationship with another person you're wondering why you keep having broken relationships some people just don't totally gave up with their mouth but not in the spirit. Some people don't gave up in both ways of thinking that they can have a good, healthy relationship with another person, even a friendship. But God, God is a relationship God. He wants us to have relationships. He wants us to interact with other people. He wants us to walk in love. He wants us to have peace and joy. He wants us to enjoy each other on this earth. And, you know, he wants us to be that vehicle of love for him. He wants us to allow him to use us to be a blessing of love to somebody else. He wants to manifest himself through us to somebody else. But we have to get healed. We have to get whole. We have to allow God to bring healing to us when we come to him. You know, a lot of us are so broken and don't even realize it. Some people think they're whole when they're not whole. And until you come to maturity and until you go through the process of being healed and becoming whole, you're not going to be able to see it in other people that they're not healed and whole. So I want to give you some wisdom keys when it comes to relationships, romantic relationships, because that's what I like to talk about on Friday because of the fact that so many people want romantic partners. They want a relationship. They want to be married. They want to have companionship. They just want somebody to spend time with. You know, and a lot of times in our world today, it's about sex. You know, so people are connecting up and becoming romantically involved with people out of the need of sex or out of fear of being alone and, you know, nobody warning you and, and just different, all different types of fears, you know. So, but God wants to give you somebody. Babies, and I want to let you know, he has not forgotten you. And in this season of singleness, enjoy it, embrace it. And I know, as I always say, as a single person, you don't heard all types of messages. You don't listen to all types of messages. I'm glad you tuned in to me today. I'm glad you're listening at me. I just want to thank you for that. You don't have to. You don't have to come and listen to my videos. You don't have to come to my page, but I thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I thank that the fact that you want God. You want to do it his way. It's evident by you coming to my video because I'm going to tell you for the best of what I have of understanding and revelation that I have from God, how to do it God's way. And that's what we have to do when it comes to relationships. We have to do it God's way. If you want a godly relationship and you have to make up in your mind that that's what you want. You know, because so many people say they want things, but in the end, they really don't want it. So you have to really make up in your mind that you want to do it God's way. That you want a godly relationship. And once you make that decision, now you have to be saved now. You have to be saved to do it God's way. Because in your flesh and being unsaved, you're not going to be able to do it God's way. You need the Holy Ghost. But once you have salvation and you're in the kingdom of God and have a relationship with God and you desire to do things God's way, like so many people do, we desire to do it God's way. But sometimes we don't understand how and what we need to do to be able to do it God's way. And I want to give you some wisdom keys today about how to do relationships God's way. Number one, if you're single, there are certain things that you need to look for and get it a godly mate. Number one, and ladies, I hear this all the time. I talk to so many women, and men do it too. But I really know this with the women. You cannot get an unsaved man. Try to bring him to church, clean him up, and make him a man of God. It's not going to work. <clears throat> Excuse me, babies. It's not going to work. 
He has already got to be submitted to God. You know, because if you go get this man and he's unsaved, you try to bring him into the church, cause him to be a godly man, because that's what you want to do. You get frustrated. I see it over and over again with us women. You get frustrated. You're fussing at him and stuff. You're angry at the house. Everything that he does, getting on your nerves, because he's not the man of God that you want him to be. You're trying to make him and mold him into the man of God that you want him to be. It's not going to work. You're going to stay frustrated. The more you fuss and argue, you're just being a nag. It's just like the word said, you're going to make him go up on a rooftop. And that's what many other men do. They leave. They don't want to be home. They don't want to come home from work. You're causing them to go up on a rooftop like the word says. So ladies, he needs to be saved. The scriptures say, don't be unequally yoked. That's the number one sign that you're unequally yoked. It's really a no brainer, but... And it's really common sense, but to some people it's not common sense because they want that gray area. They want God's rules and regulations to work the way they want them to work. They want God to change his rules and regulations, change his word to suit their situation, to suit their emotions. And God don't work like that. You have to line up with his word. You have to line up with his way. And one way you're going to line up in that area is by taking heed to the word. You cannot have an ungodly man and try to turn him into a godly man and think you're going to have a godly relationship. Number one, no, 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 no. Number two, you cannot go out here and think God is going to send you somebody that's already married and already in a relationship. If this man, I don't care if he comes to you and tell you, I'm getting divorced or the woman tells you I'm getting a divorce. It doesn't matter what they're getting. They're pulling you into an adulterous relationship. I don't care if they've been separated for two days, two weeks, five years. I don't care. They are still married in a covenant in a relationship. God is not going to send you somebody that has not cleaned up their life and been restored by him. He is not the author and finisher of confusion. He's not going to send you out here and do something that's going to be against his word. That is adultery. God don't want you in adultery. What did he say? Adulterers will have their part in the lake of fire. So don't try to get a man. And just because he said he's getting a divorce. And think that, oh, he loves me. He's with me. He's my husband. Oh, they've been separated for X amount of years. And the same thing with you guys. Don't do it. They're pulling you into their distal function. They're pulling you into an adulterous relationship. And it's a no, 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 no go. Number three, babies, wait on God. Wait on God. Make sure you hear the spirit of God in them. You know, you can tell when you don't been through the process and somebody else don't been through the process with God. You don't have to try to make them live and do and be biblical principles. They're already standing on them. They're already waiting on God. They already, they're going to be just like you. They want a godly relationship. You're going to hear God in them. They're going to know when they see you that you're talking God. They're going to hear the language of God in you. They're going to see the traces of God in you. And you're going to see the traces of God in them. You're not going to have to try to figure out, do they love God? Just even if they're just talking Bible and talking scriptures, there is a big difference. The enemy knows the Bible. The enemy quotes scriptures. You can look at TV and hear that every day. But to walk it out and to live it out is a whole different situation. A whole different story. So waiting in the midst of your waiting is a blessing. In the midst of your waiting, you will grow. You will learn to understand. You will get more peace in your spirit. As you're waiting, you know, you'll get all these counterfeits that come in the midst of your waiting. But as you're waiting, you'll start maturing up and realizing that that's a counterfeit. It was only a test. And God is watching you pass these tests. And you're learning along the way that, no, I don't want this in a mate. I don't want that in a mate. Along the way, you will be picking up nuggets of truth you would pick up nuggets of understanding you would pick up your belief system from god and start to understand that my belief systems was of the world but now my belief systems is becoming more godly and that person that you would have been attracted to in the world 
and in your immaturity that you will find that you won't be attracted to as you begin to mature in God. It won't be the same party. You won't even look at them the same because you won't see the spirit of God in them. And I'm going to tell you, babies, if people look the way that their character is and the way that their spirit is, some people will be some ugly people. No matter how fine or gorgeous or good looking and handsome they look on the outside, if they manifested the spirit that was on the inside of them on the outside, some of you would run from the hills. You would not entertain it. You would not want them. They would be looking hideous. You would be gone. You would be out. And that's what you got to learn. You got to be able to see people through the spirit. You got to be able to see them through the spirit. Stop. Look beyond that flesh and see that spirit in them because that is what you're going to be living with once you marry them and after you get through that honeymoon phase of excitement of having a boo in your life and that spirit in that house begins to manifest in all kinds of ways they're going to become ugly real real quick <laughs> believe me and you're going to be sick and tired of that ugliness and some of you will stay, like some people are now, out of fear of not getting somebody else, fear of being alone, all different types of things and reasons why you will stay with this ugly person. Well, babies, I got so many other wisdom keys. I just threw some nuggets out there for the day. I hope that it's a blessing to you. Babies, lean on God. Learn the ways of God. Learn the character of God so you won't be deceived by the enemy. I love you, babies. Mwah! Smoothie sugar woogers, and God loves you too. And He has a mate that is being prepared for you, just like you're being prepared for them. Ladies, we are a helpmate. God is purposely preparing you to be a helpmate for your husband. Men, God is preparing you to be the head and the leader of your tribe. So, babies, allow God to do what He wants to do in you, and don't fight the weight. Allow God to do what He wants to do in you, and don't fight His design for your life. Allow Him to do what He wants to do for you. Love you, sugar woogers. Have a wonderful weekend. Mwah. Smooches.